the spirit of prophecy in the Advent movement. Adventists have long held that the two primary identifying characteristics of the remnant church are keeping the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 12:17 and Revelation 19:10. Now that we have seen the clear testimony of Scripture as to what the spirit of prophecy is, it seems fitting that we should also see what the pioneers of the Advent movement had to say on this subject. The majority of the following quotations are self-explanatory and therefore need but little comment, if any. J. N. Lockborough, Great Second Advent Movement, page 467. The same objections that are raised against manifestations of the gift of prophecy at the present time might have been urged with the same force in ancient times, i.e., we have the scriptures and therefore have no need of such gifts. These same scriptures tell us, however, that Christ has placed these gifts in the church to do their work until, quote, that which is perfect, the perfect state, is come, end quote and that the church is to, quote, come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, end quote. The Prophetic Gift in the Gospel Church, page 33. To that people who are not in the dark concerning the coming of the Lord, the Apostle gives the following weighty exhortations, quote, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. End quote. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 through 21. It is evident from this language that if the spirit of the Lord is left to work as God designs, there will be among the believers of the second advent good and true manifestations of the prophetic gift. Murdoch's Syriac translation of this text reads, quote, Despise not prophesying, end quote. Greenfield, in his Greek lexicon, gives as the meaning of the word here rendered prophesying means, quote, the exercise of the gift of prophecy in this sense, 1 Thessalonians 5.20, end quote. With this also agree the lexicons of Parkhurst, Robinson, and Liddell and Scott. Heavenly Visions, page 28. Paul exhorts those who are called the, quote, children of light, end quote, those who are looking for the second coming of Christ, to, quote, despise not prophesying, the exercise of the prophetic gift, prove all things, Hold fast that which is good, end quote, 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 and 21. The apostle well knew that in the last times there would be so much of Satan's work and spurious gifts that the people of God would be in danger of rejecting the genuine manifestations of the prophetic gift, of, quote, despising, end quote, before duly considering the gift. Hence the exhortation, quote, Despise not prophesying, hold fast that which is good, end quote, which is equivalent to saying, there is to be some good manifestations of the gift of prophecy connected with the last church. Do not allow prejudice to arise and lead to a despising of such a gift before a candid and careful investigation. Do not at once cast aside a genuine manifestation because you have met something bearing Satan's mark. Exercise care. For there is to be a true work. Prove it, test it, that the good may be discovered. Heavenly Visions, page 119. Seeing that God had prophets in ancient days, prophets who were divinely commissioned, whose words found no place in the sacred canon, cannot God have prophets in these days? Can he not have divinely appointed messengers today with the prophetic gift, whose writings form no part of the sacred scriptures? Stephen Haskell The Cross and Its Shadow, pages 53-54 to 54. 
Zerubbabel was walking by faith in the words of the prophets who had foretold how and when Jerusalem would be rebuilt. But these prophets were dead, and he now faced difficulties that he might be tempted to think the prophets never expected would arise. Then God sent a living prophet with a message of encouragement to keep the light burning and enable Zerubbabel to press forward and complete the work prophesied of by the dead prophets. We cannot comprehend the word of the Lord without the Spirit to enlighten our minds. The light shines to the degree in which we take the word and risk our all upon it. And as we come into difficulties in following out the instruction given through the dead prophets, the Lord sends messages of strength and encouragement through the living prophet to enable us to press forward to victory. Quote, These are the two sons of oil, light givers, that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. End quote. It is the Spirit of God accompanying the word which has been committed to the people that will give light. Whatever the prophets of God have revealed to man in the past is light, and those who have adhered strictly to the testimony of God by his prophets, although it may be hundreds of years after the testimony was given, are spoken of favorably by the living prophet, as Zechariah spoke to Zerubbabel. Bible Handbook, pages 137 through 138, Spirit of Prophecy in the Remnant Church. Revelation 12, 17 and 19, 10. The remnant keep the law of God and have the spirit of prophecy. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Prophets in Christian Church. Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. Christ left the gift of prophecy in the church. Exodus 7, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. A prophet of the Lord is a spokesman for God. 1 Peter 1, verses 10 and 11, and 2 Peter 1, verses 20 and 21. The Spirit from the Father and Christ speaks through the prophets. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, Testimonies, Volume 5, page 661. Revelation 1, 1. Steps by which revelation comes. First, God. Second, Christ. Third, angel. Fourth, the prophet. Fifth, given the people. Second Chronicles 36, verse 12. Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Second Samuel 23, verse 2. Prophets speak from the mouth of the Lord. Testimony, volume 5, page 677. Revelation 1, 2. These messages are called the Word of God and Testimony of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, the best gift. Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 14, it brings unity of the faith. Luther and Zwingle were both good men, but there was not unity between them, for there was no leading prophet to give them counsel from God, and each followed his own ideas. Testimonies, Volume 1, page 86. Joshua 1, verses 2 through 9. The power of the message is not lessened by the death of the prophet. Acts 2, verses 16 through 18. Prophets in the last days. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 4 through 8. The spirit of prophecy confirmed in one gives efficiency and prepares them for the coming of the Lord. 